This is part two of my series on installing this 500 gallon off-grid rainwater collection tank. And in this episode, I'll put in the fence surround and corrugated panels. In part one of this series, I covered the pouring of the concrete curb, the underground drains, and placing the tank on the pea gravel. The surround has five 4x4 posts that support 2x4 and 2x6 rails. The posts are screwed to adjustable galvanized saddles, and these lift the post up off the concrete by an inch. The top and bottom rails on the sides of the surround have a rabbit, so I can flush mount the galvanized corrugated panels. Around the back of the tank, I created a space for a mini pump house. This will hold the solar controller, battery, wires, fuses, and etc. for the DC water pump. With the SketchUp model done, I can start cutting the parts. I'll cut all the 4x4s first. Behind me is the 1200 gallon tank that I covered in the first rainwater collection series. I'll put a link to that playlist at the end. We wanted the tank and surround to feel like an extension of the pavilion, so we adopted the timber frame look with full dimension rough sawn red cedar, and we used the same stain for this surround as well. What I'm building here is beyond what is needed for a rainwater collection tank, but we wanted to do something different and dress them up, so to speak. And for this particular tank, the fence surround is also functional as it will support some of the plumbing and wiring later. Next, I'll cut the 2x6s for the bottom rails. And then the 2x4s for some of the mid and top rails. I can get away with cutting everything to final size here, as I was careful to set the forms and pour the curb square and level. And then I cut the rabbit in the top and bottom side rails. A viewer in the previous series commented that I should have made the horizontal cut on a slight angle for water drainage, and that is totally true. If I was going to do this again, I'd make that first cut on a slight slope. I'll roll on some stain now that all the parts are cut. This one is a one coat sick and semi-transparent. It dries overnight and with only a single coat, the parts are not oily to handle or work with. I do a few extra coats on the tops and bottoms of the posts and to the ends of the rails. And I was thinking that I'd like to add a low-profile, simple galvanized cap for these posts if I can find one. Maybe I could just cut a square of galvanized sheet metal and epoxy it on. I'm open to ideas here, so leave a comment below. The hardware stores in my area don't carry a post saddle for a full dimension 4x4, so I need to trim mine down to 3.5 inches. I love that this is western red cedar whenever I pull out a chisel or need to shave it down. Our property is sloped and there's not many truly flat and level spots, and in the winter with our heavy rains the soil can get soft and saturated. So because of that we decided to pour a concrete curb to hold the gravel, and then this acted as a foundation for the fence around. A single screw through the post saddle holds the bottom in place while I clamp a temporary brace to one side. Then plumb with the spirit level. Then I can repeat that on the second post, with the addition of another temporary brace. I use small blocks clamped to the post to support the rails, and a long pipe clamp pulls them together and holds them in place while I drill pilot holes, 
then run in the screws. I'll be toe screwing the rails into the posts, and I think this will do for this particular project. Once I got a feel for how this was going together, I drilled all my pilot holes in the rails ahead of time, and sometimes started the screws in the holes. This can make working solo a lot faster and easier. Next, I'll add the middle rail and run in more and more 3 inch screws. Now, over on the east side, I'll add another post. Check for plumb and add supports. This side has two taller posts and a higher rail. I needed this additional height to support the three inch pipe from the pavilion gutters and to support some of the plumbing setup. For the rest of the sides, I'll add rails starting at the bottom and work my way up the post. Then the mid rail, followed by the rabbited third rail. and a 2x6 at the top. And around on the west side, I can repeat all these steps. Now at the back south facing side, I'll add three 2x6s. We have consistent wind coming from the west, so I thought I'd add some additional protection for the pump house with this short section of fence. I'll jump ahead in time here to show the corrugated panels being added. Eighth inch spacers lift the panels to center them vertically. I used one inch roofing screws that have a metal and rubber washer.
I set my post spacing so I could overlap these a few corrugations and not have to cut them. Except for this last panel. I have an attachment for my drill that cuts sheet metal pretty well, but not as good as I had hoped for these corrugated panels. It left a rough edge, but I was able to straighten it somewhat with a hand seamer. Later, I made some cuts with an angle grinder running against a straight edge that was clamped to the panel, and that worked much better. The mini pump house will be a box with a hinged lid. I made some walls with 2x3s and 1x8s, then screwed these together. I'll add a bottom to the box made from exterior grade plywood. Then I'll cut the end walls for the sloped top. I stained the box and added a top from plywood and attached it with gate hinges. This plywood has a synthetic roofing felt tacked on and then corrugated panels attached. We temporarily set this box in place to see how it fits. And that's pretty much all the carpentry work done. Perfect. That should work, huh? Yeah. In the next episode, I'll cover all the plumbing to take water from the gutters of the pavilion and deliver it to the tank. If you like what you see on our channel, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Stay safe, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.